Hey folks. Oh no, I did it again. Hang on. This isn't the scene we want to be on. Sorry, I'm using <sighs> I'm all mixed up from moving around all over the place, guys, and uh yeah, we're we're getting into the lobby, we're getting into games, we're getting into the next series. And uh it's gonna be the winners match of Beyond versus Zest, which I'm really excited for. This is like it's... super GSL quality style things, but I don't think they picked a Bizzle Reef. No, they didn't. I literally waited for it to turn to honor grounds before I need, I, 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 It's not even a request. I need you to record this just so we can see what happens. Like I, I should have visualized this thing where like you've moused over. Like it happens on everyone's phone. You've done this thing on your phone a million times. We go to press a button, but the phone loads at the last second and moves it down, right? <laughs> like I feel that's what's happening to you in StarCraft, but I've never seen that happen, so I don't know how it happens. It's so it. It's very easy to, to visualize and think, you know, because when you you know what it's like to create with mod, you press the create with mod, and then the mod list comes up. First, it says abyssal reef, and then 1.5 seconds later, it changes to the map that you want. Like you just change, it just so, like swaps over. Hang on, I gotta show stream so they understand what we're talking about here, right? Like, and this is not me trying to disprove the ambiguity. This is just like here's what it looks like for those who don't play StarCraft all the time, right? Like you have the map list in front of you. So like let's say you have to click on a ground to host on a ground. So you click it and then you just hit create or create with mod even. So I'm trying to figure out how Zombie Group does this. And this isn't her okay. fault. I know it's not her fault. She, this is like she's just... I think you could replicate this much though. Like when you do that, look at the title. Like, what do you create mean? Create honor grounds. Create honor grounds with mod and then look at the name of the map when in the mod lists, like as soon as the pop up comes up. Honor grounds? If you do it, maybe with other maps, like it's a, it shows Abyssal Reef first. Well, I guess choosing Abyssal Reef wasn't a good example there. No, it doesn't at all for me, man. I don't know what to tell you. Fucking magical. Again, like I'm not trying to say like, oh, Zombie Group's so bad. She's so good at making lobbies. It's just funny because this is one thing I just can't visualize because I've never had it happen to me. Like I don't, I don't, <laughs> I just, I don't fathom how it works. You can visualize it. I really can't because it makes no sense to me. Like I actually cannot. Like I'm I'm with you, okay? I'm not against you, but I can't visualize it because I've never seen it happen. And I can't I, I really can't imagine this. Like am I am I taking crazy what's is everyone else with me on this? Like I can't I can't picture what's happening to you that makes that happen, is all I'm saying. Okay. But uh, it was on the grounds this is Awkwardness aside, is going to be the first map. This is a best of three. This is brand new, so if you're just tuning in, you have not missed any of the Zest Beyond action here. And uh, as we load in, we will find out which of these players qualifies into that round of 16. Of course, for those who don't know the format of Ting, the round of 32 is a group stage. The round of 16 is still a group stage. And the round of 8 is where everybody starts mingling in single elimination. But spawning here on the bottom right side of the map, we do have the pink Protoss Zest. And the top right is the blue Terran Yun. Now, people are bringing this up in chat. I wasn't here for it, but Zest and Byun played in the Alima League recently for the finals at a best of five, if that's correct. Okay. Well, you would be the one who cast it with Maynard like two days ago. Uh, I want to say that's not correct, but maybe my memory is just bad. I'm pretty sure you were telling- I thought you told me, wasn't it like Bion started off bad or something, or Zest started off bad, or somebody was down 0-2 and then they came back to win it? No. <laughs> you asked me what happened, and I was like, yeah, you and then you asked who won, and I said Bion. Huh. There's no more description than that. Maybe I was talking to someone else about it then. But the point is, like, you cast <laughs> this, man! What the- Uh, and they're right, it was Zest versus Bion in the finals. It was. It was. Uh, I do remember it now. It was. It was. It was back and forth. It was. Um, uh, like Zest just trying to cheese, and then eventually it started. Like it worked out. It didn't work out. It didn't work out. Worked out. Then a macro game that worked, and then the end game was just like really anticlimactic, and like beyond just like tank push and won. So. Well, I'm glad you brought up cheese because I was actually going to bring up that some of the best Protoss play we've seen against Terran lately has been cheese. Stats kind of changed this up. We got to see some straight up macro games out of him, which were really cool to watch. But just generally speaking, classic and hero, I think have impressed me more so with 
whether it's proxy stargates or super duper all ins, like those just seem to be the best way to consistently beat Terran and get a couple of quick wins. I just had a very convincing macro game, but then um, the second time he tried a macro game, it wasn't nearly as convincing. So it does still seem like all ends are the way to go. Uh, Zest is not going to be able to do anything in the early game. Beyond does like command centers first whenever he can possibly do it, and it's actually surprisingly helpful against the pylon rushes and stargate follow-ups. But there are adept all-ins that could still do damage. That's something he did try to do. Didn't work. So by the way, Beyond's done this many times, right? Where he just he gets the fast command center and he throws in a, pun a bunch of barracks. But we don't often see him add add-ons on so quickly. And this is actually like I'm gonna say borderline greedy. I don't think he would ever do this on a two-player map. We well, yeah, he had literally made no units <laughs> up until then. So it was, it was. He took a chance. You can't, you know, there's no real scare of the pylon on the low ground because you know he didn't build a wall there. It's gonna kill one's a pie people, and that's not really worth it. So it was a a bit of a gamble, but. It works out well. He'll still have this really nice boost of production so that even if Zest wanted to go for a mid-game all-in, he'd still have a lot of bio, and it'd still be hard to execute. Fuck. I wish someone donated this 4K. What? I, I don't know what you're talking about, guy in chat. I was watching a while ago and a dude donated like 4 4K. Maybe you mean $4. I'm sure that happened. Oh, $4 is totally feasible, totally viable. Not, not 4K. I don't know. Anyway. I thought that anyway was leading somewhere, so I was giving you the moment, but I will fill that gap because beyond having done this so, again, I'm going to say greedy because it was like no units made. He's going to have stim at a much faster timing. And well, maybe the power for Beyond's push comes through making, I think he's usually, what, 20 Marines and a Marauder or two by the time he pushes. He'll still have a lot of units, but more importantly, he'll have stim at a much faster time. I'm not sure if he'll time out well with plus one or not, but it is something where if he decides to push, Zest might be the one in a bit of trouble. Because now he's kind of... <laughs> he's the one who's not made any units so far. Yeah, he did scout the build. Seeing the barracks timing and the third barracks timing, he knew what it was. I mean, he could have gone for a faster third nexus and, you know, maybe gotten like a real big boost to economy, but he chooses to kind of go the fast tech path. And still, still fairly safe. Observer is going to be able to see the timing on the medevacs as well. I think I did see the starport. And uh, yeah. it's a pretty obvious location of where they're going to try and drop first in these positions. Cess will have to defend his natural pretty well. Uh, but then, as the game goes on, obviously it's going to be more about running around the map. This is a, a similar to a game that Zest did win. He got to four Colossus, maxed out army. Yun tried his best to win and. Uh, Zest had a couple of really good emergency storms mm. that won him the game, but that was honestly, even though Byun lost that game, he was in a position to win it. He just kind of messed up by not checking his back, basically. Oh, wait, there's a hidden meat rack on this map. I didn't even know there's any Easter eggs here. It's kind of a cool Easter egg, I guess. <laughs> I, I suppose. See if there's other ones on it too. Uh, by the way, we did miss a sub shout out. Dog one is open. Thank you for the four month resub. I guess he did it while we are watching that Jesse video. It says, uh, my peers at work have been wondering why I've been constantly holding up three fingers. Now they're going to wonder why I'm holding up four. Well, I guess, what are you going to do when you hit 11 months, dude? Uh, bring <laughs> Sexual <a toe> harassment. <laughs> Just walking around with a boner all day. <laughs> wow, you went there. All right, then. Uh, this attack out of band, like I said, this doesn't quite come with the Marauders, but it comes at a much faster timing. It does time out with plus one, but there's still like the issue of a Colossus here. He takes on the pylon very quickly. Zest doesn't have a lot of buffer, so the Marines actually stay on top uh -oh. of it. Uh -oh. Almost gets the Colossus, but forced to back away. Now Zealous providing that buffer, but he goes back in for round number two, and he wants that Colossus, but two of them might just be too much. I think so. Only or Marines, not. no combat oh. shields. Oh, okay, he's going to drop on it. That's, well, that's so worth too. it. That's so worth it. It is. <laughs> it's absolutely worth it. And damn, beyond, he's going to continue this aggression as well. Killing one Colossus really stops them from, well, getting to the point of, of no return, basically, which is bio. You know, they have one Colossus. It's not such a big deal. They have two. It's a little questionable. Three, you probably have to wait for a good concave. But if he continues to snipe them, he might be able to pressure to a win. So he's taking a faster third base, and now Zest is uh, a little more scared to take his. He's already delayed it. Now he's laying it even further. Uh, 
Oh, that's another free pylon. That's a good pickoff too, because it takes away some of the vision around the base. Colossus is a little bit exposed down there, actually kind of scary. If there had been a three or four Marauders that he could have stemmed on top of it and possibly killed it, but he unloads on the main. Again, no vision with the pylon being down, so Zess didn't see this coming, and Beyond's already hitting with it. Mothership Gorn goes down, not oh, a single God. overcharge! Oh, with these Widowmines positioned where they are, the probes can't run away, they'll get picked off! This Stalker's not gonna be good enough. Widowmines actually kill! No. Oh! So much damage on the Colossus! This is snowballing so badly. I mean, these and units so even, quickly, like, there's too. trap in a corner, it's still kind of worth the Widowmines take out the Stalkers. Oh, dear lord. Those Widowmines also hopefully get cleaned up. Let's see if Zest forgets about those, because if he does, the probes are right there mining. There's so much going on. There's no reason for them to think about this. The Widowmines are about to come off cooldown. You know what? Even if they just go off on the Colossus, I think it'd be worth it, but. Looks like he's got a couple of probe kills. Meanwhile, the front is being sort of chased around. Beyond, uh, he's got a, such a good amount of SCVs behind this. The army supply is not exactly running out of control this game. This is actually still matching him on army for army. But the fact that the third CC is down, the fact that he's muling it like crazy now, and of course 56 workers, he's going to be able to produce so many units going forward. Yeah, Beyond should have a very significant army supply advantage given one or two minutes. And Zest is certainly feeling the burn. Like, he knows he's fallen behind and he took way too much damage with that secondary drop for sure. His lack of a third base is really starting to hurt. You know, at six minutes, it's okay, especially with the Colossus build. At seven minutes, I guess it's still excusable, but like nine minutes, uh, that's quite extreme. And as he tries to defend a third from attack, he doesn't know where it is. He doesn't have the Zelnaga. Uh, he gets out of position for this drop. This Not is a. I mean, it's kind of risky flying through stalkers like that most of the time, but I think Beyond is fully aware of his position in this game. It's no misjudging, like, am I ahead? Can I afford to lose this? Like, he doesn't care. He can fly through blink stalkers all day. Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he has the production to continually even waste a little, you know, with it. When it comes to bio, for sure. And now he's following up with Vikings, which will be the real nail in the coffin, as Zest has been losing his stalkers and doesn't really want to Place these baby units and even gonna. Uh, no, actually, he'll still have an upgrade lead. That's the one great thing happening for Zest in the double forward is that he'll have 2 2 over Beyond 1 1. His army supply is just being the gutter. I think, um. Beyond, Beyond's that kid, right? We'll do a bit of a callback here. Beyond's that kid who can spend 5k a month on phone games, but in this term, it's minerals. <laughs> uh. Yeah? I don't know if 5k, but I don't know if he's that rich, but yeah. I would love actually if I could somehow pay, like, when I'm playing any other phone game with, like, StarCraft Minerals. <laughs> I played a macro game really good three days ago, so I think I can afford this. <laughs> well, since you bank about a thousand minerals. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> yep. It's exactly the case, too, which is I'm sad to admit. Can't even refute that. This fight at SS, though, might just be his last. The army supplies are really getting out of hand, and, and with Beyond producing four Vikings at a time, Zest's best unit right now is going to be this Colossus, and those might not stand for very long. I mean, there's no waves of Adepts or Zealots in front of this. It's a handful of Stalkers. This is just not an impressive army. It isn't. If Beyond was caught in a choke, maybe. But even then, I think his Marauders would win now. the boys. He doesn't need to, but he does. He knows it. <laughs> Really doesn't need to. That's gonna be it. Just, uh, GG. Gold. Yeah, I feel like a lot of folks. You would imagine. I'm I'm speaking like here as if I knew Protoss. I don't know Protoss for Jack Squat, but you think a lot of these Protoss players at this point would know that hey, when Bien opens CC quickly like that, that's exactly what that game is gonna look like every time. And if it is something that is straight up never ever gonna have an answer to it, that's when balance gets into the question. But I think a lot of it is we, we see people make the wrong responses all the time. Like trying to rush out a Colossus versus somebody who's going to have 40 Marines. That's how you lose that first Colossus as we just saw. But uh, I think it'll be some time. As again, this, this build out of Beyond is not exactly super popular. We're not seeing replicated all over the place. But it is definitely like a very dangerous build. And I'm thinking back on like he would do it on Whirlwind a lot. And I'm wondering if it's like a four player specific map. And that's why it gets more and more greedy with the different versions of it that we see. I don't know. from making slightly less reactors to just going all reactors all the time, always. <laughs> I don't even need upgrades. Just the Marines. 
Uh, I do want to address something though that's been going on with stream, and I want to keep this out of the gameplay footage for now uh, as we get into this next lobby. First off, someone's asking how many bits is that at the top of the stream. Just generally speaking for any streamer, guys, because it's all the same rate for everybody. If you take away the last two digits of any bit donation, that's about how much it's worth. So, for example, 100 bits is about a dollar-ish. Uh, but people have been inquiring about our money a lot today, and, and some guy was trying to bring up some 4K donation that I don't ever remember ever having, and that's not the problem here, but... We're very transparent with a lot of what we do, right? Like we show you guys where the money's going for tournaments, where your donations are going for the fundraiser. Like we, we, we have no problem sharing the information with you. But the thing is like if, we're, if there is information that's not being shared with you, it's because we don't want to share it with you. So for example, if you come into the stream and you start demanding like Zion Grub's personal bank account information, like how much money is in your checking account? I hope you don't find it rude when we tell you to fuck off because it's just not your business. So I'm not sure why this is being a topic tonight. And we do love you, all of you, even the bad people in the audience, but please, have some manners. Yikes. Did someone ask that? <laughs> Not your personal bank info, but keep asking about like how much money Space Trade TV made and stuff like that. Um, like, look, it's enough to bring you guys good content. It's enough for me and Zombie up to get by without being too rich in life, but without being poor either. I think it should be good enough. Anyways, getting into game number two for the Ting Open. I do want to remind you guys to check out our sponsors if you're from the United States. Taking some mobile phone service, they're looking to save you some cash with maybe your phone bills. And the best part is, they don't require contracts. It's a month-to-month -month thing. So take a look at it over on bttv.ting.com. But uh, he's on his losing life, so to speak, in the bottom right. It's the red Protoss, Zest. In the bottom left is the blue tear, and he is Yun. Now, of course, the reminder that this is the winner's match, and for those who maybe don't follow brackets or don't understand them even, this just basically means the loser of this falls to fight against Solar in the grand finals of the group, and the winner will directly qualify into the round of 16. Yeah. That's what it means. Uh, I guess Zest is a little paranoid of Gyan going for a proxy. I feel like it's been a while since I've seen Gyan proxy versus a Protoss. He doesn't ah. seem to it. Yeah, that's a good point. He was doing that for a while. I've, I've, I've referenced that many times. Where, like, If there's one Terran player who's willing to throw those buildings across the map, it's likely going to be beyond. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's a possibility, but in the last dozen PVTs with beyond, I feel I just I, you know, I haven't seen it. So it's more likely you're going to try and scout for a command center first lately with Beyond. Which this is not. It's gonna be a typical wood of mine drop off of two bases. Zest could go ahead and try and play a different style than Colossus. He could try and do like a fast third into some mass gateways. Uh, you know, again, it's kind of coming back into fashion, but it seems like only in North America. But Neve's been doing it. I'm sure M. Canning's been doing it. Disruptor drops have been proven to be pretty cool, and I would love if that came back into the matchup. Unfortunately, it hasn't been that great. But a lot of it had to do with like liberators, not. Uh, not to say a lot about Liberator versus the Disruptor direct interaction, but the way Stalkers and them would work. And now that the Liberators do less damage versus Protoss, I wonder if there is actually an opening for Disruptors to start coming back. You wish. I do. I love watching them. I think they're really fun. Especially they're really fun. It really is one of those things where, like, it, it will split the men from the boys type thing. Like, the good players from the bad. And if you have good disruptor control somebody like M. Canning <laughs> uh, can kill Gumio where no other Protoss players can uh, like sometimes it's not truly sometimes it is luck 100% it's like a widow mine right like sometimes we'll see focus fired widow mines and sometimes they just get 18 banelings on their own it's like nice nice seven disruptors bro <laughs> I guess I can't do anything against them. I feel like you've been on the other end of that stick no, I've been that Protoss. <laughs> oh, I did not expect like, that. Like, throughout seven disrupts, like, I don't know what I'm doing, and I just killed like, a bunch of bio. To be fair, like, the Terrans I'm facing are really terrible when I play my Protoss, but, uh, yeah, I felt a little dirty. Just racking up disruptors and being like, these work. Anyway, the build from Byun was not a Woodermine drop. I mean, he got a Woodermine, but uh, it was just defensive. He goes for a Raven, and then a second Raven, maybe? <laughs> maybe a Banshee, I don't know. What does this mean? Well, uh, I don't know. The Raven aside for the moment, the fact that this is quicker blink, we talked about Zest maybe feeling a little bit paranoid about drops, so I guess feeling a little bit 
like he needs to be very defensive this game. I don't think this blink is going to be anything close to blink all in, but it is something that will let him catch medevacs coming his way. And I guess in this odd instance to the Raven for maneuverability, right? But uh, I like I like that he's going to have this possible defense setup because as we saw in game one and as we've seen many times against Bion in the past, like he once he starts dropping, that's when he starts tearing you apart. If you can blink, if you can feed back, if you can do anything to shut down those drops, I think that's the best way to stop Bion from killing you. Well, yeah, the blink will be nice to help, but I guess since Zest could not confirm what build it was, you know, he, his nervous server never got in. In fact, it's still trying to get in a safe path. That Raven. <laughs> uh, he did feel this was the safest option, and I guess this is really the safest build. It still gets a little bit of greed in it because they get double forge, but it's not, you know, it's no fast third base. It's a mass, mass army, gateway army that is. Which, it would have been a different style of play. It would have been maybe something to throw off the end a little bit. As obviously Zest doesn't feel like cheesing or all-inning this series. Uh, that different styles could have been could have been the trick. But the War Prism is a little different. And is hitting at a, almost a perfect time. Unfortunately, it's going to you know pass the medevac. The medevac could just come back. Could have, would have, should have. There we go. Bien does turn around for this. Auto Terrace will also help deal with this quite a bit. And that Viking, of course, will eventually hound down the War Prism. Uh, unfortunately, while War Prisms are faster, it doesn't work when you start at point-blank range with a Viking, then start running. <laughs> well, that wasn't too effective right there. That was supposed to buy a lot of time against drops like this, so he could maybe get a third base in an okay time. But now, he's got to be finishing up the gateways, he's got to defend against the drop that, well, he should know is, is still on the way. I mean, sure, he, he showed it, and you might think, well, now that he's shown it, he's not going to do it. But, uh, uh -uh. <laughs> well, he's still going to do it. Army now responds just in the nick of time. That was kind of close, really. I think Gun's okay just attacking the natural. I mean, he's still got two tanks. They're still going to be really annoying to deal with. As, as long as there's no third, then maybe Gun just feels he doesn't even have to attack. Yeah, and so I'm a little distracted this game because for some reason the bots are timing out a sub who's linking something, and that should never, ever happen. But more to the point, a lot of people are bringing up the fact that the Bay Trade TV website is hacked. It's a bit of an inside joke. If you guys don't know about the Oli Moly hack thing, don't worry about it. We know our website's down. We're working on it. We've been working on it for a while, but honestly, it's been a super low priority because we've been so busy casting and organizing things and signing contracts and blah, 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 blah. So I promise you guys, the website is eventually coming back. But don't worry, it's not genuinely hacked. <laughs> no, it's not. We have Resident Glaives now on the way. One more finishing up. More Colossus. This game is, in a way, better. I mean, sure, Zest lost that War Prism, and that could have been a lot of... Not damage, but it could have been more control over the game. He does not lose any Colossus, and the Snowball effect hasn't already started, you know, in that term. This just means that Byun's gonna wait a little bit longer and get closer to max out, and <laughs> get that nice army going, and it's, it's still gonna be a tough game for Zest, who only really is planning on his Nexus now. Doesn't look as much of a bop as last game did. Oh, what okay. am I just pop on the stalkers? Gotta dodge that. As Zest was any good at this game. <sighs> <sighs> Sometimes casting with you, zombie. I swear. You know, now that Zest has three Colossus, he could try and be out in the map and scare Bion a lot. Because Bion doesn't have a lot of Vikings. He doesn't even have combat shields. Which I don't know if Zest is going to notice or not. But... Um, even two Colossus on like a good map can be scary to try to pressure and, and show to the Terran player. But Bion is on his way to Vikings, and I guess well, he did save his three tanks, so it would have been dangerous for Zest to really pressure. I think, I mean, okay, so don't get me wrong, like Vikings obviously the better option in a lot of the cases, but seriously, to this many tanks, their extra range, I can understand why Zest is hesitant to push and try and do anything, really. I mean, Ah, tanks are so good, and I've been really, really enjoying that they've had this revival in the matchup. I like them. I like them because of the micro, am I right, guys? <laughs> Not anymore, at least. Rip the dream. I still do. Feels a little. The Vikings are now on the way out, four at a time, and Bion is feeling confident with that. He's going to push forward. Oh, uh, you know, there's... Is this could try and, and dodge and weave and, you know... Height <laughs> with not only his stalkers but also his, his real army that's a little too dangerous. He's been trying to defend. 
Unfortunately, with this third base being taken, though, like the tanks either have the high ground on this ramp, like uh, Yen is doing, or oh, but if, if they seek up so elsewhere, they still have a bit of a choke going to them, so it's just an effective map to do tank pushes on. So this is why I really like the Raven, by the way. It's got two point defense joints ready to go. If you wanted to actually dive in for the Colossus with the Vikings, I think you could. If he was worried Might. about the Stalkers blinking at him, he could throw down the point defense drone immediately. I mean, it nullifies at least two rounds of the Stalker shots, at least. But uh, no point defense drone yet. Nice. Oh, there we go. First one does go down. It soaks up a lot of hits, and the tanks end up living through this. Viking shooting away the Colossus is getting low in the background. I think Beyond's army is going to be just a little bit too good, even with the Immortal on the ground side. Yeah, the tanks didn't get taken out by those Immortals. Zest, I mean, Actually, at least he saved his Stalkers, so it looks like he can go ahead and, and save his army. Like, well, one tank not. died through that, by the way. He's going to blink in and try and focus yeah, down the rest, but that cost him his Colossus in the process. And Marauders yeah, with good. Medivacs beat out Stalkers, without a doubt. Vikings land on the ground for that extra bonus damage, and Zest, he's got a thousand minerals in the bank and no way to spend that right now. Here's that next round of Warpins, but the pylon gets cancelled. Oh, that's going to hurt. I think if Zest had a couple of adepts shading through, or had he focus fired the tanks much sooner, he might have a decent shot in this game. But now I think the armor supply is way too out of control. Upgrades are evening up as well. One of the biggest things about Zest's engagement there. But he had upgrades, didn't matter. And, uh, he's gonna lose his third base while dealing with the main drop. Gee, <laughs> gee, beyond what a beast takes the series 2-0, and I guess. Not so surprising, we'll be one of the players qualifying through to the round of 16. Not too surprising, no. But this will leave that finals match being Solar and Zest once again. And on one hand, you have the bracket potential curse happening here. On the other, uh, it, it is just something where I don't think that series was super lopsided. Like, it didn't feel to me like when we watched it. Uh, Zest was out of control and there's just no way to stop him ever. Like, I think Solar has a, a fair shot coming into this finals rematch, but just that reminder, it was Zest who knocked him down in the first time. Yes, it was. But uh, we're going to go to a commercial break. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching the stream today. I hope you've been having a good time. we got one last best of three coming up here in just a moment's time. Solar versus Zest. We'll see you guys in a bit.